Hey everybody, welcome to the Silver Spook Podcast. Uh, I'm Christian Miller, aka Silver Spook, and I'm very excited to be here with... Nathan, um, yeah, aka Chicky, from Sick Chicken Studios. Awesome. Um, so, yeah, Nathan is uh, working on a really cool point-and-click uh, adventure game called Guard Duty that is currently in production. Um, they successfully made their Kickstarter. Congratulations, sir. Thank you. Thank uh, you. Yeah. Uh, thanks to and, all the people who uh, pledged on our Kickstarter, more importantly. But. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank, thanks, guys, for supporting um, these great indie games. And Guard Duty is a game that is, um, well, I'll, I'll let you talk a little more about it, but it's, it's uh, uh, s- scheduled approximately Q3 2018. Yep. So I finally got the release date correct, and I'm not rushing anyone's production schedules accidentally so uh we want to talk a little bit about the game just yeah overview. sure um yeah so guard duty is a game uh, where your actions in the past drastically affect those of the dystopian sci-fi future um it takes place across two time zones which are about a thousand years apart um so the core of the game features sort of a medieval high fantasy setting um similar to something like like the legend of Carandia or like Discworld. Um, and then on the other end of the scale, you've got the dystopian future setting, which is a rule, uh, world ruled by an immortal overlord who's enslaved the people of Earth under his evil regime. Um, and that part of the game sort of influenced by cyberpunk classics um, like Blade Runner, Escape from New York, Ghost in the Shell, that sort of thing. Awesome. Um, yeah, so I, I, that's one thing I kind of picked up when I first watched the, the trailer was this uh, kind of... Uh, it's a game that reminds me of things like, well, I, I just mentioned previously off air that it reminds me a little bit of Highlander uh, in the sense that Highlander is a, is, a, is a movie anyway, or a series that takes place across time periods where they have this immortal uh, entity who, uh, you know, he starts off in, what is it, Duncan MacLeod starts off in the, the uh, uh, was it the, uh, the medieval Scotland and then, and then he ends up in the, in the you know, uh, modern uh, dystopian uh, 80s New York, I think, uh, towards the end of it, and sure, um, yeah. uh, I don't, I don't want to give away any too, many, too much. You don't, you don't have to tell exactly what the plot is, but as I understand it, uh, it, it is something where the events of the past kind of like affect the future, and so I, yeah. I was just interesting, like how does that work? So like, so if something like, so mm-hmm. to, let's say, what, what what is an example of like something that you might do in the past that, without spoiling it too much, that would affect? The, okay, the so. There are certain evils in the past that your protagonist is sort of trying to stop. Um, he's not necessarily successful in this, um, but he does. He, uh, it, the game involves time travel. I'm trying not to give away too much of the plot here. It's uh, it's quite an ambitious plot, um, especially for sort of like an indie point and click game. Uh, it's oh, yeah. something that you might normally see in a Hollywood film, um, which is probably why it's taken me so long. But um, yeah, it's, it's basically I'm telling an origin story and then following up with like a consequence story, um, and then kind of combining those two in the third act with um, with a healthy dose of time travel. <laughs> I see. Cool. Yeah. That's um. I, I I was thinking that I was like, yeah, this is this is an ambitious game. Uh, I mean, if if for nothing else, then you're gonna have to make you're gonna have to have like uh, not necessarily totally different art styles, but you're gonna have to kind of construct totally different like yeah. settings yeah for worlds. sure yeah there's um there's like two player characters that you play as um so like as is typical with adventure games you have um a player character that will have like multi-directional walking um different talking views different animations for picking stuff up like reactions for certain events and then i started work on the sci-fi section and then i've got to do all of these animations again for a second character um which is it it's fun. It's quite intensive with the art style because uh, I try to keep things like really, really detailed. There's loads of animations in there, um, but yeah. So like trying to develop two separate worlds is it's similar to working on two games, except it was all written in parallel at the start. Um, both storylines do tie into each other. I'd like to think quite well, um, but yeah, yeah. It's definitely ambitious, that's for sure. But we're we're almost there. We're um, sort of uh, probably about three quarters of the way through development now. I've been working on this for. Oh, well, four years now. Um, so it's a lot of work, but yeah, I can, the end is in sight, which is great. <laughs> it's a really good feeling. Awesome, yeah. Uh, four years, wow, yeah. That's that's about uh, almost two times the length uh, I took to make Neofeud, so that's that's uh, 
that's a big that's a big game um uh yeah so i mean two separate worlds uh uh yeah i i, I definitely like the um, yeah the, the level of the the details of the art style is definitely high I, it's it's uh it's 320 correct the resolution yeah. or is it yeah sure it's 320 by 240 so it's um it's it's a four by three aspect ratio when i started the game i really wanted to mimic that sort of 90s adventure feel so i know there's a lot of people out there who play classic adventures on like four by three monitors um they've got like specific monitors set up for it so i wanted to kind of appeal to those guys um but it, obviously it's also playable on a widescreen monitor but boarded oh i see i see uh yeah 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 yeah, yeah. that makes that makes sense um uh yeah what was i gonna say so yeah th so the um, you mentioned uh well you mentioned blade runner uh Discworld as being some inspirations um obviously well i don't know if you the source of podcast this is the <laughs> uh you, you will be number 11 for 11 uh what is your favorite cyberpunk movie of all time sir you oh say okay it's it's a tricky one um because okay I, I really like um a lot of like the cyberpunk animes and stuff so really into ghost in the shell um uh-huh um i really enjoyed like psycho pass and ergo proxy as well they're great but i must say as far as films go i think blade run is a masterpiece i think the sequel the recent sequel was fantastic it was it was really good um so i wouldn't i, I haven't necessarily got a favorite because i feel like anime and animation is almost a different kind of game to like cinema and live action films but yeah favorite anime is probably ghost in the shell favorite live action cyberpunks uh, probably blade runner uh, awesome um okay so there there you go blade runner so uh, really scott he's got to give me like uh you gotta pay me some money for all this marketing <laughs> i'm doing for him it's sucker uh anyway so yeah uh cool yeah uh that's one thing i mean uh, this I, I do yeah i i, I i'm kind of more the stuff that i do just tends towards cyberpunk for a lot of reasons so maybe we could talk a little bit about that um uh so yeah, i mean we don't have to talk about i, I mean we've, we've gone i've gone over a lot of blade runner with like everybody who's been on so maybe um uh and it's yeah it's an amazing movie um but uh let me think of something yeah so you, you, you sound like you you actually do because i had like that like, grandislav games came on david gilbert came out i mean neither of them are really necessary i mean they, they know cyberpunk but they're like they're like fans um so maybe like um what do you th let me ask you this what do you think is uh a defining uh quality or what makes something cyberpunk or what do you personally personally look for in something a cyberpunk uh content media yeah sure um like i'm i'm a big fan of like mechs and robots and stuff um and androids so like any kind of um human augmentation that sort of thing is like it really appeals to me i just love um like techie robots and gears and like wires and stuff um i also like that i like the kind of um the punk side of it so like the social disarray the like oppression from big corporations um and like yeah the kind of more rundown slum elements of cyberpunk oh i see um yeah 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 that's definitely th that's a that's a topic that i remember there's a big article like at some point and there's been a debate i've had i've had this debate with some people and some people on the podcast about um cyberpunk <laughs> we need to make cyberpunk punk again uh it was a it was a, <laughs> it was a topic uh i forget where it was might have been on pc gamer summer but um yeah it's a thing yeah it's like a lot of uh a lot of the cyberpunk um um you know it, it's kind of got the cyber stuff it's got the augmentations it's got the technological you know merging of the human or transhuman or post-human entity with the technology the uh, the you know nanotechnological or biomechanical augmentations and you know it's got but and it's got the future city uh but then it's missing kind of the you know the underside of it the kind of like the scummy underbelly um yeah. which is what the that's why that has the word punk in it and i kind of like I kind of, I kind of want to get like I'm talking to one of these guys. Have you ever, have you read any of the cyberpunk literature by any chance? Um, yeah, bits and pieces. I've, I've read some Gibson. Um, I'm reading Mona Lisa Overdrive at the moment. Oh really? Uh, oh, oh, there you go. Uh, 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 shoot, I can't think of a quote right now. I just remember something about the blue laser light is, is important early on. Um, <laughs> yep. Uh, I used to be able to, I used to be able to like recite a lot of these things like the Iliad. Uh, it's like the modern. Uh, uh, but anyway, yeah, I, I just I was really deep into the Gibson stuff. But yeah, definitely like the 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 the, the I, mean, I I talked about this before, a little bit before about how the literary the literary movement was kind of like you know the cyberpunk movement. Well, it was actually a label that was applied almost like in a derogatory sense in the way that Daft Punk 
uh, got its genre name because a journalist decided to call it that, and then they just took that on. I think Cyberpunk was yeah. uh, it was it was a, it was a, it was a, it was a journalist uh, needed a shorthand to describe what these countercultural science fiction authors were doing to um, you know the kind of space that you know the white ivory tower, you know, sixteen lane highways. Ray gun gothic is one way to describe. It's kind of this kind of uh, utopianish um, kind of sci-fi that was evolving in the seventies, and then and then the cyberpunks were like, you know what, this future that you're talking about is not really happening because now it's 1980 and we got Margaret Thatcher, we got Ronald Reagan, and our cities are like falling to you know going to shit. So um, here's another, <laughs> here's what we think, and 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 you know it's it was a kind of it was a rebellion, like punk was a rebellion as a, 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 against the. Uh, it was anti-authoritarian, etc. Against dystopia, the mega corporations that were showing up. They happened to be a lot of them Japanese, which is why a lot of the visuals have a lot of neon kanji in the in the cyberpunk still. But um, but I do think yeah. it's like it is, yeah. So it's 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 something that kind of came out of that. And then nowadays, it's kind of like I mean, it's kind of I always joke. It's like you know, it's like the 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 the, the, the Jeff Goldblum is gonna have to come out and be like, you know, you're the everybody's packaging it, they're packaging, <laughs> they're packaging it, they're putting it on a plastic lunchbox and they're selling it. You know, that's what's happening, right? <laughs> That's what I think. I, uh, I mean, not all of them, but I'll say some of the some of the cyberpunk stuff that's coming out now is just coping, copying the visuals, and then dropping the actual punk stuff. And it's like, uh, anyways, I'm gonna I'm gonna rant for a long time. But uh, but yeah, yeah. I, what, do you, think, what do you think? I think there yeah, has been there has been a trend recently where cyberpunk is kind of is is it's rose in popularity again, hasn't it? Like there's lots of mention of cyberpunk at the moment, which uh, is 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 good. Like it's good that there's more content out there and more people creating that sort of thing. But um, I think when it's something like, obviously you're very much into your cyberpunk, when it's something close to your heart and it's something you've liked for a long time, it's always a little bit, I don't know, uncomfortable when stuff doesn't quite hit every beat of the genre that you're used to. Like, yeah, yeah. Um, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's weird. I mean, I've, I'm very, very, I mean, so, I'm so, I'm like literally so close to it. Like, I mean, because I like, William Gibson, like, I mean, he's not like my personal friend that I talk to every time, you know, I have a bad breakup. Not that I ever going to have that again, because I hopefully stay married but uh but you know like it's but i do kind of like um you know I, I, all my circle of friends are from the william gibson message board and he, he comes down and he hangs out with us uh when you know uh from time to time in, in vancouver so it's all very yeah, wrapped cool. up yeah it's really cool he's like a really nice guy if you ever get to vancouver you know just say hey william gibson come down here and see blade runner 3 <laughs> with me sucker and he might come down and do it i swear to god he's a nice guy I, we actually saw moon the david bowie's son uh duncan jones is science fiction moon you've seen moon before the... yeah yeah I, I really enjoyed moon yeah yeah so we actually got to see moon with william gibson uh in vancouver um the next day he was just like yeah i want to see this moon you guys want to go and That's i was awesome. like yeah what the heck? it was kind of <laughs> surreal we're in this like abandoned vancouver ghost mall this huge mall with nobody in it and it's just like there's like one guy in the back of the theater and it was like me and like five other william gibson board people and william gibson just sitting there and then after that, he gets out and he's like writing novels while he's talking to us in the back of a, like a French uh, Citron. I kind of what a, it was a surreal moment. I was so trippy. But anyways, uh, <laughs> I don't want to go off on Gibson. I can go deep. I can go like for two hours on that. But anyways, um, so yeah, so Cyberpunk. I, 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 the point is that Cyberpunk is very close to me, and I, 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 I don't want to be like one of those like, oh no, you didn't, you can't change my thing. Like you can't change my Star Wars. You can't change my. Final Fantasy or something. I don't want to be like that about Cyberpunk, but it's it's not so much you can't change it, but I just um I feel strongly about the punk side of things because of my personal experiences and all these other things, and I don't I don't like um, the co option. Like everything gets co opted ultimately. Like you know you could say rock and roll. Uh, you know uh, all the movements ultimately get co opted at some point because corporations discover hey we can figure out a way to make a lot of money from this right like you know yeah. even the internet itself right it was like this kind of rebel territory where all these you know, hackers and these countercultural cyberpunks were out there in the eighties, which are fourteen point four dial up, and uh, you know, <laughs> hacking, freaking with the telephone, you know, blowing their beanie whistles into telephones, and then, you know, two decades later, you got giant, mega giant, giant tech companies now, right, that own everything. And so, anyways, um, so I don't know, what, what do you think about like, what, what is your favorite thing about um, like, well, just choose like, what is your favorite not Blade Runner cyberpunk work, and like, what, why, what, what do you like about that, or uh, um, uh, all right. Yeah. I'll, I mean, I guess. Uh, well, we both we both make games, so I'll, I'll talk about games. Um, there you go. Yeah. Something that often isn't necessarily referred to as cyberpunk, but I've always felt is very much grounded in it is like the Metal Gear Solid, um, at least the first Metal Gear Solid game and the second one, so to speak. But that is, um, 
it's like it's got themes of like uh it's got like you've got the metal gear at the end which is a giant mechanoid robot you've got like clones you've got um sort of military themes in there like espionage um i've, I've always felt like that game is it's got like without relying too heavily on the cyberpunk genre because you don't see the sort of the other side of it you don't see like society and you don't see the slums and like the downfall of society but yeah that that game has always been um one i've really liked um also like deus ex of course um oh yes couldn't go on your podcast without mentioning deus ex yes um, sir and, uh, james dearden uh he, he also likes deus ex so we should all get together on a triple podcast and <laughs> Just talk about how great that game is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've tried. Um, I liked. I like Human Revolution. Actually, I know a lot of people don't like the uh, the, the third game, um, but I, I really enjoyed that. But I, I've tried playing Mankind Divided, the latest one, and I just can't quite get into it. It's like it's too shiny, and uh, yeah, it, it doesn't quite have the sort of. I think feel like the first game, the level design was like really, really good in it. Um, I feel like that was lost a bit as they went on, but. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, Mankind Divided. I actually, I hate to say, I haven't even gotten to round two. Part of this is my computer. I think I, I'm scared it's gonna like explode my computer, which has Neo Few Two on it and all the games I'm working on. And I don't want to, because it's the amount of graphics and stuff requirements. And I, I, you know, I've, I, I kind of have, um, you know, I don't have a 14.4 dial-up modem, but I do have like ancient hardware. Um, yeah. yeah, and I would love quite, to. Quite yeah. an intensive game that new one. Is it? Yeah, and I feel like I feel like that's kind of the thing. I mean, um, it's, and uh, it is that, um, and I mentioned this. I very briefly mentioned this like last time. I think is that a lot of times the the the, uh, um, the I mean, again, like this is the, that that co-opting thing where it's like you know you start off with this kind of uh, the, the the initial thing. Deus Ex was this kind of you know it's Warren Spector. It was made in Texas, the Lone Star State, with John Romero, the rock star of games. Right, was the producer. And we're like, you guys go out and do something really original and like, you know, just just go out and um, make the best game you can think of. Um, you got free reign. I don't care how much, you know, we didn't say I don't care how much money you make, but, you know, um, the Deus Ex creators, right? Uh, and, uh, you know, it was, it was uh, uh, Dishonored, the guy who made Dishonored, um, and uh, Harvey Smith, uh, the, they like basically invented so many things in, De in Deus Ex the first, right? And um the the immersive sim fps rpg hybrid um these things were kind of like unheard of the things that um kind of we take for granted nowadays like all the games like you know prey and uh th those games that have like super high levels of realism and uh choice oh our fps games are first person like games that have rpg elements that was not even a thing and yeah. then and it's all this pioneering stuff and then you know then yeah as you mentioned you got you got um what you had um the sequel, which <laughs> I don't want to say because people might get mad. James Dearden uh, likes the one that came after the first one, and then the third one, uh, which is I like that one a lot too. Um, I, yeah, I still like. Yeah, but the, and then the fourth one, it was kind of like, you know, I don't want to say I, I don't want to put words in their mouth because I haven't even really played it. But everything everybody I've spoken to has said that with basically what you said, which is that kind of it was miss it was it, it was you know I don't I don't want to burn it because it's my favorite franchise, but you know like it kind of lost some of that original the energy right kind of just i don't know what yeah. you think about that yeah i think um the visuals in the fourth game are like a, a fantastic like, you you go to prague and it it looks really nice um there's some cool like um sci-fi dens you go to like the lighting and the art style is really nice but it took a very different turn with the third game from the art style of the original i mean especially if you look at like the fashion design of the characters in the third game which is also carried over to the fourth game um it's all like quite elaborate fashion whereas the original game they were just sort of you know wearing suits and trench coats and kind of typical punk cyberpunk sort of clothing and i think they kind of lost that a bit and uh yeah the franchise has lost that I don't want to say it's rubbish because I haven't finished the fourth game yet, but I just didn't really get into it as much as I would like the first game. Um, and this, the second one, I, I don't know, that was developed for Xbox originally, wasn't it? So I think it suffered a bit there. Oh, yeah, it had, had console-itis, I think was what they called it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, you know, it's, 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 I mean, I, I mean, to be honest, like, I did like the, 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 the story aspects of, uh, what was it, uh, Invisible War? Yeah. Uh, like you know, the story was. I actually, in some ways, it's got some. 
I, I, I can't really comment on how good it is compared to the first, but it definitely, the story was still strong. Those same writers, uh, Warren Spector was involved on it, but yeah, the, the gameplay, the, a lot of, a lot of stuff got basically watered down. Um, a lot because of loading was, screens as well. Like loads uh, of loading yeah, that screens. Yeah, <laughs> that was one thing that pissed the hell out of me. I, I yeah, that, that kind of killed it. I think the first time I played it, cause I remember sitting there for 30 seconds after every five minutes of gameplay, you'd be sitting there waiting for the game to load. I think that actually, that actually probably the, um, if people didn't already like it for some reason, that definitely made it a big problem. So yeah, yeah. it kind of it killed that sense of exploration that, that you get in the first game's level design. Like the first game, kind of the levels seem to like nicely um, come round on themselves, so you can sort of find a back alley that will lead back to the start. And but yeah, that one was uh, yeah too many loading screens. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, that was a problem. Um, but yeah, anyway, yeah, Human Revolution uh, was good, and yeah, so I think like the 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 um, I was gonna say yeah it, it 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 well here's here's something like kind of like dovetailing off of that uh i don't know if you have by any chance have you watched the x-files or have you heard of the recent season 11 um yeah I, I haven't watched the latest season i've only ever seen like odds and ends of x-files i need to sit down from the start and just watch it all because it, it looks like a great series but um yeah x-files is uh uh well like i was talking what, what it was uh, Jonas, one of the guys who worked on uh the nameless mod. Have you heard of this? The nameless mod. Yeah, um, I've, I've seen it mentioned. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So the nameless mod was it's the biggest DSX mod. Um, and we're talking about the the X Files and what well, the 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 milieu or the culture, the 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 state of the world and the media industry in the late '90s in which DSX was developed. And X Files was like one of the biggest series of that time period. Certainly of the sci-fi series. You had Star Trek: The Next Generation, but then. Um, if it wasn't Star Trek, you know, X Files, everybody knew who that was. I mean, everybody, even Grandma knew. You know, you, you yeah. could whistle the theme, and everybody know what you're what you're talking about. And so it's a good that really, <laughs> it is right. I mean, um, it's great. Uh, so I, I, I can't. I, yeah, the, the in the creator of the show is this, uh, um, the showrunner is a really really smart guy. Um, and a lot of the 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 the, 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 the conspiratorial nature, um, or you know, the, the how like every conspiracy theory is true in Days X. Um, the X Files. That was. Not, I mean, it, it's, it's very similar in the sense that it's all these kind of like you know, a mysterious phenomenon, the UFOs, the the uh, uh, um, you know, uh, uh, unknown creatures, cryptozoology, uh, shadowy government agencies. The, the main characters are two, you know, uh, alphabet soup agency, you know, FBI spook type uh, characters, Mulder and Scully. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, who are who are tasked with investigating the more paranormal, spooky, mysterious uh, sci-fi aspects of uh you know uh, 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 uh cases right and that's the x files and so that a lot of that kind of bled into not bled but it impacted uh deus ex for sure i mean you can see that throughout the game because i mean the first deus ex the first is yeah it's black helicopters you got the illuminati you got all the you know there's there is actually some the aliens there there's actually a rumored a, a moon level where you go up to see the actual aliens um and oh, that really? got cut. It, yeah it was cut <laughs> well, from the final game um and uh that's those those little the uh the grays in it uh is from that and and so it's like yeah a lot of this stuff was you know it just you know and then the, and it all kind of bled together and the matrix also had some fashion sense that came through um the trench coats and the shades are in that's why you know uh, I, I you know i'm still my, my fashion and sense is like still from the late 90s 2000s with my, <laughs> with my glasses but uh uh but yeah so anyway so like X, and i uh it, it is i mean it's interesting that x files is coming back now i've watched the first couple episodes of the latest one and it is um um uh well it's it, it, it's updated of course it's different today not 27 18 is a different time but it's uh um i have no idea where i'm going with that but uh, check out the x files that's what i'm trying to yeah, say yeah no uh, i will do i just uh i just feel like i need to start from the beginning you know i need to get to know Mulder and scully and really get into it um this yeah i need to find some time set aside watch the x files that'd be great <laughs> <laughs> yeah maybe finish guard duty or <laughs> and then you can do that yeah once the game's done i've got i've got a big list of like games and tv shows and stuff to watch but uh, yeah i'll finish guard duty first <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's that's one thing I you know, I felt really bad when I was yeah when I was working on my game uh, uh, near feud I didn't I didn't watch or play hardly anything I think I might have I think I only played like maybe I don't even want to say because I feel really bad I might have played like a handful of games like while I was making it and maybe yeah, watched yeah. a few series yeah go ahead yeah yeah well it's the way it is isn't it when you I mean I find when you're making a game as soon as you start playing a game you get about half an hour into it. And you just get inspired and you're like, ah, actually, I just want to work on my game. I want to be the person who's releasing a game and other people are playing it. 
It's, it's, yeah. it's tricky. It's always at the back of your mind. Like, oh, I've just got to finish making the game. Yeah, but it's really good. Like, if you get into that, I mean, it's kind of, yeah, it is kind of like once you get into that zone, you're in like another, you're in like another world because you're, you, well, I mean, you're literally in the world of your game when you're like, the, or in a book or anything like that when you're writing something. Uh, it's, it's, uh, yeah, it is kind of like an immersive, yeah. It's, uh, we'll talk about an immersive simulation. It, it's really, it really is, that's the most immersive sim you can be in is when you're actually deep in creation. And so, yeah, I totally know what you're talking about. And it's like, yeah, you watch something and it just gives you an idea for the thing that you're working on. Um, and it's hard to really even pay attention sometimes to, the, you're like, I can't, I can't fill my head with all of this canon and backstory because I've got, my head is full of the game, yeah. you know, guard duty or whatever it happens to be. And there's no more room for that. So I'm just going to go work. Yeah, it's weird. It was like, it was like the only thing I could think of doing when I was making, which it is like, as you said, like it's the only thing you could think of. Um, like making the game is more fun than any game you could play. In a certain, yep. uh, it's, which is, I mean, it's great. I mean, it's, I mean, I guess, it, you know, it's better than some jobs where you just loathe going to work on Monday. Right. I mean, I don't know if you've worked those kind of jobs before, but. Yeah, no, uh, I've, I've worked, worked my fair share of those sort of jobs. Yeah. No, uh, it's, it is great. It's, um, I mean, I'm, I'm doing it full time at the moment. I've been doing it full time for sort of the last six months. Um, I'm not sure how long, much longer I can afford to do that before I have to pick up one of those jobs that, that you loathe going to. But um, yeah, it's great. Just sort of, you know, wake up every day, you're in the zone, start making your game. Sometimes it's hard to let go and do other things, I must say. But Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's one thing um, that we uh, talked a little bit about uh, is the, you know, balance, <clears throat> you know, balancing the work and the other stuff, um, <clears throat> balancing work and personal life. Uh, Dave Gilbert's solution is basically, I, I, I call him, I'm going to call Dave the uh, poster child for the 21st century digital mom and pop store because <laughs> Dave yeah. and uh, Jan uh, Janet. Was, yeah, Dave and Janet Gilbert, you know, they're like the mom and pop store. You know, they make, they, they pay their mortgage, they make their money, they send their kid to school. Uh, and it's all from, you know, and they live in their little apartment, which is also the store, right? And it's, it's, that's what the mom and pop store was. You see your little, you, you know, living quarters, and then you have the crack seed store, you have the, uh, over here, your crack seed store. <laughs> You know, you're selling your, your doohickeys or your cookies or your bake shop or I don't know what kind of, you know, the pies uh, below and that's your home business, right? And so I, I think that, that I really I really like that aspect of it because it's like, um, uh, um, I mean, I, uh, I could go off the deep end and about why, but it's basically that, you know, I like that concept of doing something that you love and it's making money in an ethical way that is not like damaging to society uh, I mean, the products you're creating are giving people joy. They're giving you joy. They are, um, and they are also, you're not cheating anybody out of their labor um, with that, uh, yeah. as opposed to some of the larger companies. I'm not going to go off on that, but we know about that. And and so, <laughs> I, and just generally, I, I like that a lot, right? So, I mean, I don't know, maybe you can talk a little about, like, how, how maybe you talk a little about like, your, your, your uh, if, if you're comfortable, it's uh, your personal life, how you got into game dev and that kind of, and, like, and how you, yeah, sure. Stuff. Um, I mean, I first started looking into AGS way back in 2003. So I was sort of about 15, 14, 15 years old, just lurking on the forums. Um, but back then, uh, people were making, like, no one was making big commercial games. It, it was almost uh, frowned upon to try and sell your game back then. It was all about just the community spirit, making stuff for fun, silly games, short games, and just giving them away for free. If you if you could find somewhere to host your game, which was quite tricky back then, oh, um, yeah. but yeah, I kind of I grew up alongside AGS and watching like people who were obviously older than me and had like a lot more self discipline than I did at that age. But watching them make really great games, um, like Dave Gilbert being one of them, um, there was some like fantastic artists on the forum who. Like with the critics lounge on the AGS forums used to be like really, really busy. Like there were people posting all the time. Um, you get really good feedback from like professional artists and stuff. Um, and it kind of, yeah, it, it made me aware of like how games are put together, um, what's involved in making a game and like the potential of storytelling with games. Um, so yeah, I was, I was really into like AGS for a long time. Um, and like, I like sort of my late teenage years, um, like went off to college and stuff and um i did a course on like film production video production um so i kind of like my professional working life has been mostly based around video production and making films and short videos for companies and stuff 
Um, but alongside that, I've learned like a lot of tricks of the trade when it comes to like animation and like uh, editing videos and kind of storytelling as well. We did a lot of stuff in film school about like script writing and screenwriting. Um, and then I don't know, sort of like my mid twenties, I just suddenly thought, you know what, I really need to go back and I need to actually make this game that I was planning way back in like 2005. Um, and that was Guard Duty. I mean, this I was I originally started trying to make this game when I was a kid. Um, did not have any of the skills, life skills, or discipline to make it. And I kind of went <laughs> back in my mid twenties and thought, right, I'm going to make this game. I'm going to, you know, re revamp the story so it's uh, so it's like it's better because you know, ten years have passed. I can write a better story now. Um, and I'm I'm just going to do it because it just felt like something I had to do. Like I've always wanted to make a point and click adventure game. I've always wanted to tell this big story, like this epic scope. Um, and I kind of had the skills at that point to be able to do it for myself. Um, so yeah, I did I did that part time um, just after work and stuff for a few years. And then, like I say, about six months ago, uh, following the Kickstarter and also saving some money myself, um, I just I had enough money to kind of support myself for a little bit. So I've gone full time on it, um, and that's why I'm here today. You know, I've, I've like almost finished the game. Hopefully. I probably shouldn't say that because people will expect it to come out within the next month or two. It's not not quite that finished, but um, yeah, it feels like it's it's almost there. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, like, <clears throat> yeah, compared relative to uh, four years, that's uh, six months is not that long. So, um, yeah, that's that's really cool. Like, yeah, <clears throat> that's really cool that you figured out. Um, you know, I mean, that's yeah, that's very similar to yeah you know, my thing. I was like, I always wanted to make games for like forever, but you know, it took took a long. I mean, if you're doing it indie, uh, yeah, it takes a long time to get the. Uh, you have to wear a lot of hats, you know, you know, when, you all know, the hats, <laughs> all the hats. <laughs> it's a lot of hat. I mean, it's like, it's a, it's a, I mean, I mean, really like it's an incredible amount of not, I don't want to like trump it up my, our own uh, abilities, but I mean, it's like, it's like making a film in the sense that it's a, it's a visual medium that has story characters, you know, yeah, it's acting. I mean, it's not live action, so you don't have to have like actual real life filming necessarily. Although some have FMVs, but you know, you have to have all of the skills you would need to produce a, 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 a you know, a, a visual show or film type of yeah. content. But then you also, on top of that, need all the technical programming, interactive, uh, uh, game design skills, um, on as well. And then if you're an indie, then you have to also, you have the whole, the business and marketing side, which in some ways is like almost like 80%, uh, uh in yeah. terms of, the, I don't know how, um, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. No, no. I just think the the business side of it is like, it's one of the <clears throat> biggest battles of being an indie dev, like just trying to gain a following, <laughs> trying to stand out in the crowd. Like there's so many, I think there was a stat, um, from steam spy saying there's 20 games released every day on steam last year. And that, that's just mad. The amount of games that are, out there now it's just, like it's really hard to stand out but then again it's also an option now you can you can try and sell games and self-publish which is which is good um yeah yeah the 20 games on steam yeah <clears throat> i did i did I've, i have brought that up and it's that has been a huge well obviously i released the game in 2017 um i think near Feud is the only ags game big commercial game that came out in 2017 so i know i mean i think i know there's a thread where mark What's his name? Mark J. Lovegrove uh, commented. Yeah, sh we should all we should all keep an eye on Silver Spook because you know I'm like the canary in the coal mine. So if I keel over dead, then uh, that's uh, <laughs> everybody should bail. Um, you know because it is it's, it was it was super scary because uh, <clears throat> 2017 was just a uh, um, uh, dumpster fire for a lot of reasons. Uh, one of them for the game industry one was uh, it was just yeah. F f well, I think the, the the toll now was seven thousand. They thought six thousand. 7,000 games came out on Steam. It's actually 21 games per day. Um, wow, yeah. Yeah, so it's actually more than we thought. Uh, 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 after Steam Direct, uh, it basically, well, Steam Greenlight, you had to kind of get voted on the Steam. You have to have a, it's you know, it's a popularity contest. It's, there's problems with it, and it got rigged. But, but you know, you have to kind of, like, vote, and then people, the Steam would have to come and okay it later. So it was, it was a little tricky. With Steam Direct, you pay $100. Any game you want to put, you can throw it on Steam. So the estimate is, I think... I, I I don't know the current one, but I'm guessing I'm guessing possibly double the amount of games that came out last year. We're talking ten or ten or more thousand games is what I'm guessing. I can't don't quote me on that because I don't know. But it's the, I, I'm watching the rate I wish they come out, and this it's, it's it, um kind of scary unless, unless something Steam Valve does something. Uh, it is gonna be kind of nuts, you know. Um, yeah, it is scary. I think um, they they definitely need to <clears throat> cut, cut down on like the asset flip games, the the games that have low effort put into them because they are like 
clogging up the market, especially for indies as well, because it's a lot harder to stand out, obviously. But um, yeah, I, th I think this year, I mean, you've got Unavowed coming out, you've got Lamplight City coming out, you've got Guard Duty coming out. Um, I'm sure there's much more that I've, many more that I've forgotten, but that's sort of free AGS games that will be released this year um, amongst all the other indie games that are coming out. I, I don't know, I think it's just really important that we've got quite a like, niche community here as point-and-click fans, as adventure game fans, and like everyone's really friendly, everyone's really nice, Like people retweeting on Twitter and stuff like that, and I think that is just really important. We really need to support each other. Um, like in London, we have um, Adventure X co the conference, which started off as an AGS meetup many years ago. Started by oh, really, Mark. yeah, yeah. Um, so Mark Lovegrove, he, he started it originally. Oh, he started it. Yeah, it was in a really sm uh, small little um, conservative club in Didcot, which isn't that far from where I live. But um, so yeah, it used to be like an AGS meetup, but it kind of it, it blew out and it became an adventure game convention. Um, uh, some other people are sort of heading that now but yeah adventure x is amazing because you you go there and it's just jam-packed with people who love adventure games like you don't get a minute to spare because you're just so busy talking to people like everyone's got something to say everyone's like really interesting really friendly um it's kind of like if you took all the adventure game fans on twitter and just like condensed them and put them in a room that's that basically <laughs> adventure x is it's, it's great it's, it's really good fun Awesome. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I never haven't gotten up there, uh, but well, yeah, one day I have to get up to London. I think that's almost like Antipodal, or it's like uh, what's it? Ten out? Well, it's almost on the other side of the planet. But it's one day, a long I'll... way. Yeah, it's a long way for you. I think <laughs> <laughs> everybody buy near for you, then uh, kickstart my four thousand dollar plane tickets to get up to London. Uh, <laughs> yeah, do it. Uh, uh, yeah, there you go. Um, so yeah, it's um, it's it's uh, yeah, that's really cool. I, I definitely like. Uh, yeah, that's why I kind of migrated out of the other communities I was in. Is I uh, yeah, well, that was part of what drew me to AGS. It was kind of like because as I mentioned, well, Deus Ex is uh, we you know we mentioned already fav my favorite game, um, and 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 I was kind of more in that genre uh, uh, for FPS uh, immersive sim, kind of those more like uh, higher definition 3D games, um, and and then I was like, but it was hard to get, and I I I, I actually started Neo Feud in Shadowrun. Shadowrun oh, returns. Okay, cool. You know Shadowrun. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, I've played it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, so it, you could make mods for it. I was making a mod, and I was like, you know what? Like, I don't know. I, I just, I, I'm like, feel like I'm working, and I'm just like, you know, it, that's part of it. Is you're, you, you do spend a lot of time working, and I was just kind of like, I didn't feel like I was getting enough like feedback. I, I, I just wasn't feeling that encouraged through that. But then I found AGS, and I was like, wow, there's like all these people, and they're all like really smart, and all like there's a high, high Venn diagram overlap between AGS users and cyberpunk likers, and I was just <laughs> like, hmm. Maybe I should go over here, and I could actually make and sell one of these games, right? As opposed to the mod, which I just has, I'm making it on my free time while I'm doing one of those jobs that I load on Mondays. So yeah. maybe I should try the point and click, right? And I had, I was not, I mean, uh, to be totally honest, as I said, I'm not, I kind of came late to the point and click um, uh, scene. But uh, when I, once I figured it out, that then I was like, I really, I really liked it a lot. And anyway, so um, uh, um, but yeah, I think it's, uh, yeah, it is important for the indies to support each other, and especially the adventure game lovers because it is a it is a you know it's a small you know it's a, we're a smaller community in a in a in the gaming the gaming world is now massive it's like what is it multi hundred billion dollar industry something like that yeah. so it's yeah so it's huge um but yeah like uh what was i gonna say about that um i just oh i just found that thread i was just reading through it a little bit but um but yeah it is it is it is interesting that um the uh shoot but yeah it, it is kind of like a thing of of you know, you have to kind of figure out your way to sell. I would say, like, you have to kind of put yourself out there. I said this last time. You have to kind of, uh, like, when I first knew if you'd released, I released it to Itch. So I don't know where you guys are going to release. You're, you're playing Steam, right? Correct. Um, yeah, we got we got greenlit on Steam. So we're going to set up a Steam page to pre-order and stuff um, at some point within the next few months. We're working on, like, a new promo pack at the moment with a new trailer. Because our trailer is really old because that was uh, pre-Kickstart that we made that. So a lot of the assets in that trailer have actually been replaced now. Um, but oh, yeah, we'll, be, we'll be selling on Steam, hopefully um, GOG and like Itch and stuff, uh, as long as we get accepted onto those platforms. Have you, have you approached GOG yet, or um, not yet? No, uh, I was hoping to have some kind of like alpha um, ready by the time before I approach them. But no, I'm not sure when is best to approach GOG. Actually, I haven't really read up on that yet. But oh yeah, it's uh, GOG has been the one. Well, I got. I mean, yeah, GOG is the one that I had. Uh, trouble getting on it could just be like they, they you know near feud uh is not quite the thing that 
uh you know they wanted to have on there but it is it, i would say gog is one of the hardest places to get i mean steam still has by far the, i think it has something like i talked to someone they say like 95 i got quoted as 95 percent of all sales is through steam and gog is like five or less but i mean that's for a different it's not a point of click so maybe there's more for you know the games like point of click adventures but yeah it is one of the hardest stores to get into so i mean that kind of cur- the, the curation level of gog is definitely a much 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 higher than than steam um yeah yeah i've heard that that's why kind of why i wanted to try and make sure that we've got um like our new trailer and our new promo pack and stuff locked down before i contact them because i don't want them to like dismiss the game before it's in its like polished finished state oh so, i see yeah, yeah so yeah. i mean i don't know if we'll, if we'll have any luck with them or not but it does seem to be like it's a it's a site people go to for like drm free like point and click and re- retro games like 90s style games so i'm hoping they might consider us like along the same sort of vein as those games like similar resolution and stuff yeah 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 it is um yeah you, your games definitely look well, all the wadget eye games got on there so you know and you're you're definitely kind of it has that it's it, i don't want to say that it's like a wadget eye game but i mean there's there's ma- many similar traits um between yeah sure it's influenced yeah. by wadget i mean yeah like like i said i watched dave um grow from you know making small games like purity of the surf which was a reality of the norm game um I remember when he released that, and then sort of I've watched him continuously release better and better games. So I tried to sort of take a bit of that on board in my own game design. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's um, yeah. So you, I mean, yeah, you might have a chat. And it, yeah, it is, it is true that this, these specific types of point click games, I think probably they probably do do a lot better um, than the average game on GOG. So that's yeah, that's probably a good a good plan if you can get on. Um, I have it. I still have people to you know. You can still vote for a few to get on GOG. I guess you know if enough people voted. For near few to get on GOG, they would probably put it on. But um, it's you can do these things where you know it's kind of like a, it's not quite green light for GOG, but it's it's like a wish list. And if enough people wish list it, then they'll they'll add it to their catalog. So you can do that. <laughs> um, and anyways, uh, but yeah, it's 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 um, it is a thing. It's hard to figure. It's it's very tough not to crack. Dave said last when I interviewed him, he said, I don't know, and nobody really knows what the business is. It's constantly changing and evolving, and you just try your best. And I mean, my my what I think is. Um, you kind of have to. I mean, if you can, if you can afford like a marketing team to just go market it, then just go, yeah, go pay somebody to go be on social media and go to all the conferences and be your a publisher or somebody to just put your game out there. But if not, then you really gotta, you know, uh, you, you know, you really gotta, you gotta get out. There. I mean, I know you do a good job because I, I, I seen. Obviously, I discovered Guard Duty and uh, part of it was through AGS, but I see it also in other places. So I see it on Twitter. I see it in, um, you know, other gaming channels, and so uh, that yeah. is kind of, yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, now I've now I've got a bit more of the game finished. Um, it's a lot easier to kind of show it because you know when it's in development, stuff's unfinished and rough around the edges. And I'm a bit of a like I, I do artwork first, art, the artwork and animation. That's like that's my jam. Um, so I kind of I I'm a bit precious about making sure everything is perfect before before the whole world sees it. Um, <laughs> but yeah, no, I've been trying to push a bit more stuff out recently. I've I've been doing a lot of the, the sci-fi scenes um, recently because that's all I've got left to do now. So. Yeah, slowly more of that content's coming out, um, and there's going to be a, a nice bunch of that in the trailer as well, I think. Oh, I see, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's um, it's definitely like an art. Um, I think somebody come. I think I was I was talking to actually Mark, and he's like, "Yeah, I wish I wish I was better at art because it seems like the social media game is mostly uh, visual, and uh, you know, I mostly have comment. I mean, most of my comments are about uh, publishing and stuff, and um, it is a thing. I mean, that's part of like you know, even when I was making Newfield, I was like, I really I. Uh, you know, I was kind of like I was, you know, kind of des- I was kind of designing the promotional material, uh, in that was mostly the you know the background and stuff and you know the you know I mean the new field one of the you know one of the thing the things I, I was like it has to have something different because I'm not super good at I mean I'm new to the Punisher genre so I gotta have something that's like the Silver Spook brand and like one of the things was you know it, it is like a uh, it is a pretty high resolution. Uh, yeah. a, a style so it's like thirteen sixty six. I mean that's the max I could do on my I would have done ten ninety probably. Or what is it the HD? But I couldn't um, get that on my my hardware. But so that's one thing that's kind of separated. And I kind of you know you kind of want to have something that draws attention. I mean, it sucks that it has to be not like a popularity comp, but it has, sucks that it has to be something like that that draws attention to you know. I, I feel like the world and the story and stuff is really you know that is kind of you know it is a slower burn ultimately. The, the that's what the meat of the experience is. It's not just some pretty pictures. But it is kind of unfortunate that you have to kind of have that marketing material 
to get people to even click on it because otherwise people will just you know yeah, i mean it goes alongside the kind of instant gratification thing with social media like if you've got some flashy screenshots then people can see them in their feed look at it quickly hit like or retweet and then scroll on to the next thing like they don't always if it's a like a post that's a wall of text they're not always necessarily going to read it but with images it's just really quick instant gratification like done I, your artwork's awesome, man. I, I think, yeah, with Neo Feud and um, this, is it Dismaton or Dismaton? I don't know how to uh, pronounce I, it. I think I, I've been calling it Dismaton. It's a it's in a made up word, so any. Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, no, I, I think um, yeah, it's it's looking awesome, especially the stuff yeah from the Dismaton demo. Um, you got some really interesting stuff in Neo Feud as well. I like it. Oh, thanks, man. Um, yeah, it's. Uh, I mean, like, yeah. There, there's some people. Uh, I mean, there's some people who are kind of split on it, but I mean, it's. I, I knew that was going to happen because I, I wanted to. Uh, one thing I learned from Primordial is I wanted to have a very signature style, and I don't know, maybe that. I, I definitely wanted to have a very unique style, and I, I actually went and like went to art museums and tried to study how you know and you know impressionism, surrealism, and all these kind of different styles, and tried to figure out how to. You know, pick. I, I kind of want. I mean, I think. I mean, um, I we, Blade Runner, of course, we both love it. So I kind of think of these. I think of the images as stories in and of themselves. That when you look at it, I want it. You want. I mean, this is by the way I approach it. Is I want it to kind of be able to communicate. Like, I mean, I don't know. For example, like if you have near you, you have that the the, the 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 levitating, you know, palace. That it's surreal in the sense that it has like 17th century imagery. It yeah. has like French Revolutionary Palace of Versailles. <clears throat> it has imagery from another era that is communicating something about the stratification of the society for example during the period of the bourbon kings uh and on top of a science fictional setting you know you know it's got that almost elysium like uh you know uh, it's like a neo blomkampian uh floating mega structure over uh something else and so i kind of wanted that to communicate the game I, wa I wanted that to communicate what the game is about like it's it is about this totally disparate society dysto it's dystopian and 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 um it just just by looking at it i, 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 I kind of wanted to communicate that, I mean, that's one thing i think that that really scott nailed right with the terrell building it yeah it just psychologically it's it, 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 it it's 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 like a pharaoh right like the, the the shape of it even right it's it's a pyramid uh of the level of this guy who is on top of this is an immortal you know uber like he basically if the pharaoh had slaves right that's who built his pyramid for him to be immortal in and so i think there's a lot of there's so many like there's a lot of symbolism there's a lot of um things communicated visually about the world they don't really talk there's not like all the site people don't talk about everything that happens in blade runner but you get the set you know what that society is like and the oppressive dystopian ness of it is communicated visually and that's kind of like i mean that that's why i, I when i paint backgrounds or when i paint the background i'm like thinking of how would Ridley Scott, if Ridley Scott was going to make a point and click adventure game, not of the, <laughs> can be bothered to do that ever, but dude, if you want to do that, I'm totally going to play it and back it and pre-order. <laughs> yeah, I think we um, all will. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, what would he, you know, how would he try to frame it? What would he want to have in the, in the, in the, in the frame to commit? I mean, uh, I'm ranting now, but to communicate visually the story without even nobody saying anything, right? You just, so, and the actors even on Blade Runner 24 Night said, yeah, like, it's like you show up on a Ridley Scott set and it's like, wow, I already know what this is about. I know what this story is. Um, all it's just, I don't have to do anything. I just, you know, I, I can I'll focus only on my characters because the story is already communicated with the set. And I think that, I, I think that that really is true. And I mean, I think also with Guard Duty, I, I, I think that, I also think that you guys did a really good job of communicating like I got the, the the sense of this is a dystopian cyberpunk city and the future um, scenes. And yeah, then, sure, like blood red yeah. sky and that sort of thing. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I think Dave Gilbert said like he people kept pigeonholing him as some kind of you know Twilight uh, paranormal teen romancey thing because and he didn't <laughs> know why. And then later on he figured out visually it kind of looks like certain types of things. And then he kind of changed the visual style and not unavowed is very you know. Uh, you know what it is, you know his late Dave Gilbert's latest game. Yeah. And so, yeah. Um, but anyway, yeah, I don't know. Uh, uh, I'll stop ranting now, and you can talk about. <laughs> no, it's good, but I think, um, yeah, I think what you say that that definitely comes across in your artwork. Like it, it tells a story. I think, I think that's really good. You got like really sort of rich, detailed backgrounds. Um, definitely stuff that you don't normally see in like um, in other like sci-fi's and other cyberpunk stuff, um, especially. Um, there's a, an image which I've seen of your game floating about that I haven't actually um, got to in the game. There's sort of 
like it looks like a like a neural complex from a brain or something you know the sort of blue kind of glowing oh. white wires and stuff i'm not quite sure how that ties into it yet but do oh, you know okay. the background i'm on about yes the one, i think there's an animation of it yeah it looks like a brain with like a cross with like a black hole with a pulsing yeah sure no that, that, yeah, yeah that's really really cool yeah and uh yeah no it's good it's good oh <laughs> yeah 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 th yeah thanks that, that's uh that was um I can't really say that's kind of like if I say what that is, then it's kind of giving everything away. But uh, <laughs> but it's yeah. But I, mean, I know what you're talking about. Like and I mean I I, I try hard and it's, you know it's, some some people are gonna be like I don't get this I don't like this and it's like you know okay. But then I I I'm glad that at least it came through for you that I'm you know I'm not um you know uh I'm trying I'm tr I was trying to go for something more. It sounds pretentious to say art art, but it, I mean I try I was trying to go for something that the the visuals were you know um communicate something through the visuals in this not in the sense it, i guess they are paintings right they're, they're 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 digital paintings that convey a meaning uh just in that and, and i because I, I mean and on the flip side I, I can't do a lot of them because it's such a high resolution i swear to god it takes me two weeks to do like yeah. one sometimes a i spend a month on some of these right yeah, I so, can imagine. Yeah, <laughs> freaking takes it's a, me forever. That's a, it's a lot of pixels. <laughs> it is a lot of pixels. I mean, I don't know. It's like you know, it, yeah. I mean, you know, it's thirteen sixty six. So that's like I don't know what is it. It's like I mean, yeah. It's like twenty times the average. I mean, ter the resolution. So it does take forever. But I mean, part of it is I want I want I want it that the higher resolution you can get you can get actual paint stroke looking things, and I kind of like I like the look of actually seeing the paint stroke. So it looks like somebody actually painted it. So it's different from pixel art. And the pixel art is you're trying to get. Pixar is kind of like a, you know, it's like a, a mosaic, uh, you know, um, every pixel is, every pic, if you're painting by each pixel, so it's a little, the attention to every pixel is a little higher. I wanted yeah, to kind of get, yeah. You, you kind of have to um, sort of trick people's minds into seeing certain shapes with pixel art, because obviously everything's kind of squared off due to the pixels, but you sort of, yeah, you're like trying to imitate shapes and using anti-aliasing in certain places to like give a you know give a certain edge to certain objects and stuff but... yeah yeah it's tricky I'm, I'm looking at some of the the guard duty stuff i mean but yeah look i mean like look at it it looks like it looks like it looks like a disc world i mean i look at one of the the medieval sections of guard duty and i'm like yeah this looks like something out of disc world so good job <laughs> to you if that's what you're going for <laughs> yeah yeah no you, you're not the first person to say that <laughs> um it's kind of I think it's it's similar to Discworld in um, in the setting because all of the characters for the sort of medieval high fantasy stuff they're all like country bumpkins I like to call them like I, I live out in the <laughs> south southwest of England in the country where everyone talks like farmers and they're they're very focused on uh, beer and not a lot else and they're so <laughs> putting, putting on a terrible accent but um, yeah it's, kind of, it's it's a similar sort of theme to Discworld. I mean Terry Pratchett the writer of Discworld he's um, he lived in Salisbury in his later life and he's he's from Wiltshire so. It's like you know we're drawing from the same sort of influences. I, I like his books as well, and I really in, um, I really enjoyed the first uh, first oh well, all of the Discworld games one two and three, um, uh, but I really enjoyed the first two despite the amount of like hate that they get from some adventure game fans. The puzzles are really really not very good in them, but I really like the characters and the sort of the atmosphere. So that was something that I wanted to convey in my medieval setting. I wanted to try and separate myself a little bit from like. King's Quest and um, like the Corandia games with trying to get a bit more of that kind of real life um, feeling so the characters feel a bit more real and uh, they're not not so much like fantasy characters even though it is a fantasy setting but they're kind of they've got real world um, jobs and like ambitions and stuff like you, you play as a guard who works the night shift in the town um, and the rest of the time he spends most of his time just drinking at the local pub like he's not got much ambition he's never really traveled um so this adventure that the player plays as tom burt throughout the medieval stuff it really is it's a unique and fresh adventure for the player and for tom burt himself he's experiencing all these different things that he's never really seen before because he's never had much ambition to leave the kingdom um but yeah it's, it's influenced a bit by discord <laughs> Yeah, I see. <clears throat> yeah, I haven't played all the Discworld games, but I, I I definitely like the Discworld series, and I've seen some of the. I think the there's 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 books and films, correct? Uh, yeah, yeah. So there's some animated films, um, and then there was like a BBC um, sort of not a series. I think it was um, just like a straight to TV film. Um, was it Tim Curry in that one? 
It may well have been, yeah. I, I, I haven't actually watched the live-action BBC one, shamefully. I've read, read my fair share of the books and I've obviously finished all of the games because I love them. But, um, yeah, no, there's, there's lots of Discworld media. They're actually um, they're working on a TV series at the moment of Good Omens, which is a pretty, pretty good story. So I'm looking forward to that, despite Terry Pratchett's passing recently. But... Oh, Good Omens, right. Is that with Neil Gaiman was the yeah, other writer? Right. Yeah, sure. Yeah, Neil Gaiman's on board. Right, right, right. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, Mrs. Mrs. Silver Spook is a really big fan, and so I think she's gonna. She's waiting. She's you know she's wish listing that as we speak. Uh, <laughs> good omen. So looking nice. forward to that. Yeah. Um, yeah. She so I mean, like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She definitely. She likes. Uh, she she actually often. I think that's why she's so good at actions because she watches so many British TV shows. She's watching The Queen, The British Bake Off, The Other British Cook Off, The. <laughs> British pasty show and um, and I was just yeah so she like she could do really good British accents and I do really horrible ones uh, it's uh <laughs> I try to get better at them that's part of that's part of my shtick on the Silver Spook live stream is I do horrible British accents for my friend uh, P Hat Games who is also a cyberpunk fan and he just uh I, I just uh it's just it's a do you know the show Devil uh, by any chance have you heard of this Devil or, Devil. Um... Fatpie.com's. Uh, oh yeah, sub- Devo. Sorry, as in um, Devo. I won't. I don't want to swear on your podcast, but basically, yeah, yeah, he yeah. does this swear. But yeah, he, yeah, that's all he does, right? Is uh, uh, Devo the, the 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 chav? I believe is what they call him. Uh, that's right. Yeah, council house and violent. <laughs> right, chav. right. So you know, I I do Devo impressions because I'm not very good at the the British accents, and one day I'll one day I'll figure out how to do accents and be a better voice actor. But uh, until then, I'll just. Uh, Badly, I'm kind of like Paul Rudd in those movies where he does horrible accents and it's funny. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I, anyway, I don't know if you watch those movies, but anyways, but it's it's really um, I do like the I do like the the visuals of this game. I like the story and the concept. I, I, I um, Near Feud had I mean, you I, you see I think you said you you played a little bit of Near Feud then. Yeah, uh, sure. Um, yeah, I've, I've played a bit and I've watched a fair bit of it on Let's Play. I don't know whether that's an acceptable thing to say, but um, yeah, I, I like watching Let's Plays of adventure games whilst I'm working. So yeah, I watch I watch quite a lot of it. Oh, I see. Um, yeah, no, it's uh, like I mean, like, that's what they're for, you know. If you, if you want to figure out what the game's about, and uh, you know, uh, you know, oh, I made Let's Plays so that because people get stuck, and I don't want to have to like, you know, send an email every five seconds when somebody gets stuck in the feed. So here, just watch this Let's Play, right? And um, so yeah, it's but it's definitely like a, it's uh, Neofeud, oh, well, what the point was Neofeud has does have time travel is involved in it in some point of it, and so that's another crossover I think with with this game, uh, and then and also visually there's you know a mish uh, blending of uh, what do you call it? it's surreal in the sense that there's um, uh, visual settings from different centuries or different time periods, but in, yeah. I guess in Neofeud, in Neofeud they're mashed together to kind of uh it, it, part of the point is to kind of make you question things about the real it's it's to make a point about the reality in the sense that you know the the world in Neofeud has returned to there are it's like the world was in the pre-enlightenment um pre you know the 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 the, the 17th century era uh 17 18th century and um but in your game you know i would say like there's it's it's it's, it's it also involves multiple time periods but it's it's um, I, I can't say what it is because I haven't played it, obviously. But yeah, um, it's it's sort of they they are separated, but it, yeah, it's kind of it plays out somewhat linear in the game. Um, so like you know you you play through medieval stuff and then future stuff, but there's sort of these like um, flash flash forwards, so to speak, um, like visions of the future, and kind of uh, it, I like to think of them as like rifts in time because um, there is time travel involved, so that does sort of disturb the fabric of time so to speak um so your player in the medieval sections does sort of get a bit of a glimpse of what what's to come so to speak um oh I see. yeah 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 i like the i like the uh yeah I, i'm looking at one of the pictures with the this one looks like not doesn't look like unavowed but it has a red sky and uh, it has a rift in it and there's somebody vanishing into uh i think i'm looking at one of the time must be the time travel scene on the webpage. Yeah. Yeah, you could well be. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's that's really uh, yeah, that, that that's cool. I mean, I like I like, you know, I mean, um, I mean, as I mentioned previously, like if I had to do, you know, America's Got Game Devs or Britain's Got Game Devs, like a TV show, like America's Got you know, Britain's Got Talent kind of show. Um, yeah. If I was one of the judges, 
You know, if I was like Simon Cowell on the show, I would give every the most original games will get the most upvotes from me. Um, yeah. As opposed to the pretty, I mean, you know, the you know, just I like I like originality better. I, I'm not I like originality over a lot of the other aspects of it because. Um, like I get really bored if I play like if I play a fantasy game and it's just another Lord of the Rings kind of game, I get really bored really fast. Or if it's just another, even if it's another cyberpunk game that's just if it's just a Deus Ex ripoff game, or if it's just a, you know, if it's exactly the same as the last cyberpunk or sci-fi or fantasy thing, I get really bored <clears throat> really fast. Which is why I like, um, which is one reason why I like Shard Light, which is one of uh, Grenislav's games because it. It, it spins post-apocalyptic into a new. It does a. It, it has a unique take on it, and and Guard Duty also like. Because uh, uh, I'm watching, I was like, this kind of looks like a fantasy game, but then all of a sudden I'm like, whoa, what the heck is this? This guy, it's a detective <laughs> noir cop with a gun, and it's in the future. What? That yeah. kind of really intrigued me. Yeah. Yeah, I, tr I try to um, kind of mess with people's sort of preconception or people's ideas of how um, the story is gonna gonna unfold. Because you kind of start out in a fairly typical happy-go-lucky fantasy setting. And then you sort of, as you progress, you learn more of the larger story. Um, and then things start to take like a darker tone. As, so you kind of, you have this contrast between this sort of really easygoing, happy start where everyone's sort of in this nice town. It's very colorful. Um, and then it, it kind of, it gets darker. It takes a darker tone. Um, and you contrast that with the events that follow leaving, which leads into sort of the bleak sci-fi dystopia. Right, right, yeah, yeah. Just, yeah, looking at the... Yeah, looking at the looking at the screenshots, I can kind of see the dark. I mean, it's it's it's. I mean, I do think also that 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 the 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 tone of each particular scene, as you mentioned, it goes from kind of happy go lucky to dark. You can kind of see that progression in the screenshots, which is, you know, that's. A, I mean, you know, kudos to you. That's a really good job because you you already told half the story there, right? Kind of like as we we're talking, as we we're saying earlier, um, is that you can you can, just looking at one like for example the one in the castle with the waterfall and the nice blue sky and the nice green grass <laughs> and the nice. You know, country bumpkin little town square or what? Do you, what did you call it? Um, yeah, that, yeah, that's the one. Yeah, <laughs> the farm town. Um, yeah, the uh, the the farmy town. Uh, you 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 get the sense of what that is um, just by looking at it, and and then and then you look at some. You know, you look at well, the one with the red sky. Obviously, um, it's it, it communicates something, and it, you know, it also has that it has that like heat wave effect on the screen. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I think. I think you'll really like the the new promotional media when it comes out, like because uh, yeah, this I mean the stuff on the website is like I say about sort of eight eight or nine months out of date now because it's pre Kickstarter. Um, oh, okay. But but yeah, I, I've I've got some pretty cool stuff in plan. Um, in 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 the yeah, <laughs> I've got some cool stuff coming for the as far as the sci fi dystopia is uh, concerned. So I, I reckon you'll like it. <laughs> cool. Yeah. 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 I'm definitely gonna keep an eye on this. Um, yeah, I was just looking at yeah. Okay, there's a what's well, maybe on the sci-fi dystopia stuff. Uh, 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 have you seen the Black Mirror by any chance? Yeah, um, the, the TV series or the games or oh, well, I haven't played the games, but I have. I've seen. I haven't seen the entire TV series, but I have. Like I, I can't. Like to be honest, I like watch like one or two episodes, and then like I feel like I'm gonna vomit, and I have to go <laughs> try not to hang myself shortly. I have yeah, to kind that, of stop. <laughs> that's kind of the. Um... But yeah, a lot of uh, British sort of dramas and stuff tend to have that. It's, 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 we uh, we do have a dark sense of humour, um, and yeah, Black Mirror definitely comes across. There's Charlie Brooker who writes that, I think. Um, but yeah, I've, yeah, I've watched all of the Black Mirror TV series. Uh, I do really enjoy it. I, I can see where you're coming from there. <laughs> it can be quite depressing. Yeah, I think well, season three. I remember was uh, I watched some of that, and I was like, wow, yeah, this is uh, well, everyone is. It kind of it kind of starts off kind of okay a lot of time and then it just goes way the hell like way downhill and by the end it's like we should just burn the entire species like it's like what the <laughs> hell we should yeah. just all burn in hell uh yeah so it's it's uh, not all of them some of them you know like was the san junipero have you seen that one that episode yeah, the one yeah. Where they... um it's like the the sort of um the couple who like they upload their con ais onto like a server and then they they, they sort of live together in an ai afterlife is that the right one yeah the ai afterlife it's like the eternal uh 80s or you can choose 80s or 90s and it's got it's like a nostalgia fest for people yeah that's who, that's the one yeah are 30 to 40 years old um but yeah 
it's uh yeah they like live in like the arcade and uh i mean uh you know and then, and then you can come back in it's the 90s and then the styles have changed and but it's like yeah but you're living in an eternal um afterlife uh in a computer simula simulation uh yeah i mean that was one of the happier the uh, not happy but that was one of the less depressing episodes i guess um and yeah. i've watched the, all of have you watched all of season four by any chance um yeah the latest season right yeah yeah yeah, yeah, I, I watched it all recently. Um, I, I didn't think it was quite as good as the other seasons, to be honest, but maybe that's because it wasn't quite as dark. But <laughs> I really enjoyed um, the, the first and last episodes. So, like, I like the um, Black Museum episode and the, the one on the spaceship as well. That was cool. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Space Fleet. Uh, yeah. With the, <laughs> the, star, with the star Trek ripoff. The star, yeah, the, yeah, the Star Trek ripoff universe. Yeah, that one was... That one was um... Yeah, there's a lot. I mean, there's a lot of ideas in in the Black Mirror that definitely, um, like, they're all like they're little, like they're basically like you know they're kind of like one shot, like short story, uh, like it's an encapsulated like one single science fictional technological, you know, you know one 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 bad thing that can happen with one particular technology. So I kind of think of them as they're like little short, they're like short stories. Each is each is directed by kind of a different director, I think, but written by Charlie Booker. If yeah. I'm not mistaken, yeah. Yeah, I believe so. I think someone helps him. Like he has a co-writer for some of them, but yeah, I think he he lead writes most of them. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I, I definitely I've watched I watched um I haven't watched all of it. I watched like season one, season three, and see I think I missed season, I think I missed season two, something like that. But anyway, it's it's uh yeah it's it's worth checking. Out. I tell people to check it out, if, especially if you're into cyberpunk and dystopian science fiction, then it's definitely um. Definitely worth, definitely worth a look. Um, yeah, it, it feels very close to home because it's sort of it's taking tropes of cyberpunk narrative and putting them in like kind of a real world setting. Like the the yeah the worlds that they're set in is very kind of realistic. It's kind of like our world now, a little bit in the future with slightly better technology, and that's where the kind of yeah the narrative and the story comes into it. Yeah, I think that's in some way. I think that's probably why it's the most frightening because it, it it's like the it's it's some of the most plausible stuff because like. Like you know the 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 you know for example I don't know the well I don't know about the consciousness uploading ones but the um like there's one episode in in four where it's there's the DARPA has these the the dog which is a dog like robot um that the mili the U S military has designed and there's uh, multiple iterations yeah. of them right and yeah, they it's like black metal I think it was called or something like that or heavy metal yeah like that. Yeah. yeah something like that and it and it's and the, the dog robots um. There's there's actual existing DARPA bots, and then in this one in this particular feature, it's just the there's a lot of those dog robots, and for whatever reason, they decided to kill all of the human race, and um, and uh, it's it's like those things already exist, and like that much of that technology that would enable an a, 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 a you know apocalyptic scenario like that already exists, and so the plausibility of it, I think, is what is the most scary and frightening thing about Black Mirror. Um, it's it's not like it's not like a story like science fiction. A lot of times, it's kind of like you know, off in this, you know, it's kind of far off, but Black Mirror, and even some cyberpunk is a little, you know, it's, it's, I mean, of course, it is really plausible cyberpunk, and it, today cyberpunk is, it's, I, I always say cyberpunk is almost nonfiction nowadays, because a lot of stuff is happening right now, in particular 2017, 2018, stuff is like artificial intelligence and robotics and AI and uh, these t the technologies that were talked about in the 80s by the original cyberpunk creators now are kind of like, they're coming online now, so yep. <laughs> it is kind of it is it's yeah it's frightening and i mean i don't know but it's i think i, I, I mean my, my thing is I, I still you know i think that it is and that's part of why cyberpunk is being made into all this like you know altered carbon there's uh snow crash there's like neuromancer is back in production there's gonna be so like battle angel ghost in the shell blade runner these are all being made now as i think it is because um par partly it's that the gen xers who grew up in, in the 80s they were the cyberpunks uh they're now 40, 50 years old and they all run all the giant tech companies. They're like running the world. And so the movies they want to make are cyberpunk movies because yeah. they can choose what they want to get made. Right. So that's why they're getting greenlit. Like James Cameron is a cyberpunk. I mean, you, you, you look at his movies, he's actually really a cyberpunk kind of guy. You know, you look at Terminator, you look at all these things, you know, you know uh, uh, strange days, his wife made the, one of these big cyberpunk films and um, you know, and, uh, but it's now it's hitting the uh, you know, the tech company runners are all cyber. They're, they're, they all say that they love cyberpunk. Even uh, Elon Musk, his favorite game is Deus Ex. Did you know that? Um, I, I think that's know. what he said. 
yeah, so even him, right? The guy who's going to be flying us all to Mars and, uh, yeah. you know, saving the planet and then, uh, or, you know, or whatever, you know, the, 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 the chief, one of the biggest technological tech Silicon Valley figures is a cyberpunk fan, right? And, and, um, <laughs> That says a lot, you know. I think that that's. Anyways, I don't know where I'm going with this, but uh, yeah, it's but, kind uh, of kind of terrifying, actually. If he's a cyberpunk it, fan, he would need yeah. that much money, that much control. Um, yeah, it's I like hope... I hope you don't. Uh, I hope you. That's that's one thing I'm kind of worried. It's like you know, it's like you see all these things coming true. Like you see the 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 up the mind uploading. You see like the mass, you know, control using uh, you know, digital software. You see a lot of the Black Mirror. You know, and all the things that were predicted by like Normanser, William Gibson, Blade Runner, all, all these not so good things. Mega corporations running the planet. Uh, that's not that's not science fiction. That's like literally what is happening. Um, this kind of stuff that you you would have hoped that it was a cautionary tale, and it was like a you hope that it would be like as was it Asimov? I can't or it was a uh, 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 Bryn, the writer of Waterworld, said science fiction is self defeating prophecies. Like 1984 doesn't look like. Uh, 1984 doesn't look like the book 1984 because George Orwell wrote the book and it self defeats. But unfortunately, it looks like a lot of the people nowadays, the world leaders and corporation leaders, are taking the blueprints of cyberpunk and going, "Yeah, that's really a great idea. Why don't we put <laughs> things in people's eyeballs and control everything that they do and like make people all into these, you know, let's 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 make robots that just kill people. That's that's great. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's make a lot of money doing it too. And it's like, what the hell are you doing? Stop it. Stop <laughs> doing that." <laughs> yeah, it is scary how um, how on the money some of these science fiction writers were. <laughs> they, um, uh, yeah, yeah, they got it right in a lot of areas. I think but it's also well, you know it's a yeah. fun time to be living in, isn't it? We, we've sort of grown up with the internet. We've grown up with the evolution of video games and stuff. It's it's a really exciting time to be living. Just there's a few things that aren't so great, but we won't yeah, dwell on that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. We try to, try to, try to, try. Well, here, you know, what we should do is, you know, we should all. This is why, this is why I get on a silver. Well, not. I mean, I don't want to say like I'm saving the planet, but I'm trying to like. Um, I work for, as I mentioned, I work for a larger cor corporate and government entities, and so, you know, I, th I do think if there is, a, I mean, something that we should, um, you know, I uh, uh, promoting uh, 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 not uh, yeah, smaller businesses, individual, and those businesses that have positive business practices, I mean, be that in the game industry or in the tech industry or in whatever industry, um, uh, you know, so that indie, indie game developers on average just have better business practices um, for a lot of reasons, right? But one of them is that the people that run indie game companies are not necessarily uh, only concerned with making billions of dollars, which um, I don't want to say what the CEO of certain uh, AAA companies is, but it yeah. would seem that they are concerned more with making billions of dollars based on the amount of negative, you know, I mean, we'll see, we can say loot boxes, microtransactions, and all kind of things that they put into games that are, you know, as I, I, I think I mentioned that um, there's pro software now that can turn any app or any game into basically digital heroin using AI and uh, addiction, addiction algorithms to make kids or people with addictive personalities or anybody addicted to any particular app or game or software, and then use that... Um, against people to make a lot of money and deplete people's bank accounts without necessarily making a game that's actually good just getting them addicted to it and then making lots of money and that like that is a totally different approach to what a game should be than say like you know guard duty or why jedi games or any indie studio or you know just you know um there's you, you i mean i don't know you you, uh, you maybe don't want to comment on this because it's kind of it's you know it's uh it's a hot topic but it is um that is something like i feel like that if that we have to promote that because otherwise, I mean, I, I don't see Steam. Steam obviously is, um, they haven't necessarily cleaned that stuff up. I mean, well, they can't, they're, they're, distribution, they're a distribution platform and the game industry is not gonna self-police itself. Or I mean, the bigger game industries aren't gonna self-police itself. So I don't know. I think, I feel like it is on the indie developers to, as you said, promote each other, hope that, I mean, uh, promote the success of indie even if you don't particularly like a game that's an indie game I, that's why i don't like it when people just kind of like rag on the indie games and like just make fun of indie games because you know those are the people i mean if you want to have a healthy industry and a healthy world generally speaking those kind of people have to be promoted because otherwise the triple a guys are just going to smash them out of existence and it's going to be black mirror world you know but yeah. not, not a show you know like yeah i mean i've i've not seen that many people sort of um you know, rag on indie games, give indie games a hard, give indie, give indie games a hard time. But um, 
I think the people that do do that are the kind of toxic side of gaming. Like, I try to stay away from those communities. But I think as indie game developers, we, we've got a responsibility to sort of provide an alternative to those, like, big budget AAA games, to, like, feeding into the machine, so to speak. Uh, there's, there's definitely um, been a trend recently where people are saying, you know, don't pre-order this game. Wait until it comes out. Check out the reviews. See if it's actually a good game. Because so many people have been stung by pre-ordering games. They've been released and then they're like missing content. That you know, DLC comes out within two months of the game release, which seems like a pretty acceptable thing these days. The amount of AAA games that re release a game, the story's not finished, and then two months later they're like, "Oh yeah, give us twenty bucks so we can sell you the rest of the game that you should have got in the first place." And I, I mean, I'm kind of about, I'm two minds of it because to produce a AAA game to the standard that they do um, nowadays, like with the sort of technology we have, it costs a lot of money. There's like a hell of a lot of people involved. There's like such a high level of detail that it is expensive. And like the prices of games haven't necessarily inflated that much. Like it's, we're still paying like over here in the UK, paying sort of 40 to 50 pounds for a new release which I remember back when it was like PlayStation versus N64. N64 games would be 50 to 60 pounds. P PlayStation games would be sort of 40 to 50 pounds. Is that, that hasn't actually changed much, but the amount of money they have to put in to make these games is a lot higher. But then again, on the opposite side, they're also making so much more money back off of them. It's like once that game's made, you can sell it through digital, distribu di digital distribution pa platforms, which means you don't have to pay for like hard printing of cds of like distribution to shops you don't have to pay like as many publishing rights and stuff so it's it it's like a double-sided coin but i just think I, w I wish games would be finished when they come out i bought the latest final fantasy game because i've always liked final fantasy and um yeah that had so much missing content same with uh, metal gear solid 5 i'm a big metal gear solid fan and that literally did not have an ending. Like they they uh -huh. ran out of money and they just didn't make an ending. There's like a bonus CD that comes with it, which has like a storyboard for what the ending would be, just to put some extra salt in the wound. But yeah, uh -huh. it, it's it's dangerous. I think at least as indie developers, we're we're providing them providing them with an alternative. I mean, I'm not looking to make big bucks with my game. If I'm lucky, I might get enough money to be able to support myself to make like part of the next game maybe make the concept so i can then kick start the rest of development if i'm lucky but otherwise i'm happy with just making the game i wanted to make getting it out there and people playing it that's that's all i want but... yeah 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 totally <clears throat> um yeah cause, because um yeah i think that's that's basically that's basically what i was talking about and it, and it's it is a thing where you have uh uh you know i mean we talked a little bit of this i you know uh, in a particular thread on a particular ags forum uh <laughs> Uh, uh, and, and it's yeah, but it, it's basically you know what what is it that you want to get out of out of game development, right? It's like it's like um, as we said, you know, do you want to make enough money to you know, I mean, retire to Hawaii? I mean, please don't because we already have enough people retiring to Hawaii, and <laughs> most of them are billionaires, and then they jack up the prices of housing, and everybody's homeless. And as I said, my last job was dealing with homeless people, and there's this freaking billionaire spending millions and billions of dollars just buying up all the real estate here. Is making that worse so don't do that but i mean if your goal is to just make tons of money right um you know it's like you know um that's gonna lead to a certain type of game if your goal is to you know make enough money to sustain the business right of like you know you want to make enough money to pay for part of the production of the next game and then kickstart it i haven't kickstarted but i mean uh, I i'm thinking about that now because it sounds like a lot it's uh it's a good way to get some funding for the game um you know and like that's you know like thankfully nick me if he has um you know, Neofia and Silver Spook Games, I, I'm doing some other work now on top of my own personal projects, but it is making enough money that I can, you know, we're, you know, and I, and I have like a wife and I have two little kids. So um, yeah. it's enough that we're not like, you know, living out of a car or something. And there was a point where we were living out of a car. Uh, I wasn't even a game dev at the time. And it was, it was so, uh, it was crazy. But, um, but I mean, with the game dev and with the situation, at least we can make enough to do that like if i had a little more money i would buy a little bit of a nicer car that i don't have to duct tape the bumper on every two weeks that would be cool yeah, i mean uh, kick... my, my car doesn't lock at the moment so <laughs> I probably there you go shouldn't, probably shouldn't say that live on air because like anyone who knows me is now gonna try and rob everything from my car but yeah I, I'm, I'm, I'm with you on that one i know what you mean that's, so that's, take... that's, that's that's awesome that um that you're able to like support yourself though off, off of neo feud that's great like, yeah yeah, gives, yeah gives me a bit of confidence as well so yeah, yeah. I mean, um, you know, Grenislav, because he, he's also, as you know, as you said, uh, 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 Lamplight City, uh, another indie AGS game's coming out. Well, uh, indie game is coming out in uh, 
2018 and you know everybody's asking like silver spook how did you do what i uh captain disaster uh you know um what's his name uh Cap you know captain disaster uh, yeah sure yeah captain yeah. d yeah he's like silver spook how do you do i'm so scared i don't know what i'm gonna do i just <laughs> you know if i don't make any money i'm gonna i don't know i'm gonna have to eat ramen for the rest of my life and i was like um well you know i mean I, it, uh, the good news the bad news is yeah probably 10 to 20 thousand games are going to come out next year on steam that sucks so don't count on getting on steam and making any money at all just i see i see steam games uh there were three bigger adventure games than myself that came out the same day as near feud tacoma was one of them science fiction adventure game. uh yep. uh, uh, uh journey down chapter three higher production values in near feud multi-person team uh uh came out the day after near feud sold <laughs> 2,000 copies um as Mark Yohalam of Primaria said, that's not enough to support a three-person team. Uh, so that's scary, right? Um, and I was like, holy Jesus, man, I'm like one guy. I spent two and a half years and I came out and I'm crowded out by bigger games than me like on the same day. You got 60 minutes of front page team time. So that sucks, yes. Uh, at the same time, um, don't if you don't make it in the first week, you know, if you're an indie, indie, indie dev and you're like, oh my God, I'm coming out on Steve. And if I don't make $10,000 in the first week, I'm screwed. Um, the, the launch, and even Dave Gilbert said this, Techno Babylon, as he said, I, mean, I, I think I can say this because Dave sell, said it on air, uh, Techno Babylon didn't do very well during launch week, and then there was a sale, and he didn't want to put it on sale, but the guy said, yeah, you should put it on sale. He put it on the, the sales, uh, I mean, um, unfortunately, that's the way it is. The sales make more money than the yeah. launches now. That's just that's just what it is, you know? So so don't freak out and, like, uh, don't go hang yourself or go, uh, you know... <laughs> Get yourself attacked by a robot dog fight. Have a knife fight with a robot dog like in Black Mirror. <laughs> uh, okay. uh, it's not total sci-fi dystopia quite yet because even though I didn't make all the money that I needed to in the first week in Near Feud and it kind of just blipped and it was gone, this, the winter sale uh, was way, it's way better. Uh, all the sales and then the winter sale in particular was way better. Uh, I got some big promotion. Um, just lucked out because, again, I was putting the game out there. You know, uh, this big channel called Funhouse discovered it. They played it, and it got one point one point three million subscriber channel with played it. Awesome, uh, yeah. So that was a, that was a huge help. I could see the numbers. It's like bam, I was like, whoa! It just like doubled, like over. You know, it, I, it's hard. It's hard to say exactly how it did, but it's definitely a thing where you know, getting less players, getting streamers, getting other people to do it, it helped it a lot. And then and and um and so yeah, and so you know, and I'm like yeah, it, um, Silver Spook Games. I'm still making Near Feud Two. I'm not homeless. Right now, uh, have been in the past, hey. but not right now. <laughs> Yay, Silver Spook is, you know, that's going to be the next kick. That's the next Kickstarter. You know, give Silver Spook, you know, uh, uh, a shipping container, twenty by forty shipping container to live in while he makes new for you to uh, Kickstarter. Like, no, you're, you're <laughs> like you're sort of creeping up on Ready Player One, sort of. Uh, yeah, that. yeah. <laughs> that's another Cyberpunk movie coming out soon. Um, yeah, so, uh, Steven Steven Spielberg. I want to say. Yeah, I actually, I really liked the book. I know a lot of people um, that didn't like it because it's kind of, it's, it's quite childish, I suppose, in its writing. But I, I enjoyed it. It was, it was good fun. I'm, I'm wondering how the movie will go, though. And I think there's just going to be way too many references and too much fan service in it, but we'll see. Uh, yeah, it's going to suffer. It's going to suffer the, you know, cyber co optization and not get the punk. I'm kind of scared. I saw the trailer. It's like, wow, it's got, like, every franchise in existence. Yeah. There's a screenshot with, like, every game in existence it's like what did everybody just <laughs> it uh, 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 i don't want to rag on it because I, I don't know what it's going to be but i was a little scared by that i will say yeah it feels like it might just be a massive advert for like modern yeah. so i mean they've got stuff like overwatch in there and that game wasn't even out when they wrote the book and even right? it's like quite a recent book as well but yeah it's um we'll see we'll see how it goes yeah, we'll see how it goes. I I, I did like the book. I, I I had uh Will Will Wheaton reading it to me in my uh Audible because he he does the ebook. Um, yeah, he's he's he does a good good job of it actually. I really like Will Wheaton is um for like Audible books and stuff. I like his yeah. voice. It's good for cyberpunk and sci-fi. Yeah, he does a good job. And um, but yeah, anyway, so uh, I will say yeah. So yeah, so I mean, you know, social media game. We're still in business. It's still you know making making um you know it's not making. We're not yeah we're not we're not um making. You know, I, as I said, I, my car still sucks, but I have a car at least, and uh, you know we have what we need. It's enough money, and you know it could be more. It should be. Hopefully, it'll go up more. But um, it's not. Um, you, you, there, there's still possibility, but you do have to get out. You have to promote. You have to get on this. So I mean, I, I don't particularly like social media because of the things we said. It's kind of shallow, and uh, you know, it's kind of you know people just browsing and that that kind of stuff is not so great. But I mean, um, 
you do have to promote it somehow, whether that's talking to people, playing it, uh, paying for the marketing or whatever you got to do. You got to do that. But there, yeah. there are there are people who are going to play it. And, um, you know, it's kind of like if you build it, they will come as uh, <laughs> as Kevin Costner says in Field of Dreams, I think. Uh, if you build the well, if you build it and I don't mean if you build the game, if you build the game and you release it on the Internet, somebody mentioned, don't just build your game, put it on the Internet and disappear. If you do that, I guarantee you probably one to ten people or less will play it and probably and it'll just... be uh, it'll be lost in time like tears in the rain <laughs> there you go well done. well met sir perfect quoting of had to get it in there somewhere there you go but that's that's exactly what it is yeah because yeah you're one of the ten thousand tears indie tears in the steam rain uh exactly what it is um yeah so so release it and then promote it and you know you know i mean yeah take you know and just take like i don't know half an hour i spend like a lot of time because uh i don't know i'm a i'm a narcissist i'm like talking about myself on the internet but you don't have to be like you know that's that's i'm, I'm joking but you know it's, it's like you have to kind of you have to kind of not you know um you have to kind of do something maybe like half an hour a day or an hour or whatever it is just 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 tweet about it like one time a day it's not a lot but if you don't do that you guarantee probably even if you make if you make like you know if you make metal gear solid 6 that's even more amazing and it actually has an ending this time and you release it and you don't talk about it still probably nobody will play it because yeah. that's you know, so that's 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 the key takeaway. I mean, I don't know if you're if you're an, if you're an indie dev, let's say, do that, promote it, uh, be nice. You know, uh, you know, I said be, don't, be genuine, as Dave said, um, but don't be a dick to people because people in the indie we're we're uh, in the well, in the venture game. It's a small community. Everybody knows, uh, you know, everybody knows who's who. And if you know, if you talk crap about one of someone else, it's gonna come back to you eventually, as Grandislav said. Uh, and build the, you know, what if I meant build it, build the community also. So, you know, if you support the community, the community will support you. And I think in games industries in all industries generally speaking so uh, uh what is this this is like i should probably like charge people like i should I, sh I should edit this last part of the podcast and put it like for patreon users who want to make lots of money in indie games to be like pay ten dollars and figure out the one weird <laughs> trick to make millions of dollars with indie games or have a sustainable community but anyway you use social media <laughs> <laughs> that's the one weird trick that every the single dad oh actually i am still married uh so i shouldn't say that but uh anyways um yeah, so uh, or, uh, I don't know. So uh, let's let's talk about Guard Duty a little bit before we wrap it up. Got to wrap it up soon. Um, so Guard Duty um, is uh, 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 I, I mean I haven't played it yet, but from everything I've seen, looks really great. Um, I like the story. I like the point and click. I like point and click adventures. I like Discworld and I like Cyberpunk. And this has both of them. And I also like time travel. So that it has everything that I like in 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 um in games i mean i don't want to say it's we like aim to please <laughs> there you go there you go sick chicken uh also this guy didn't pay me any money to say any of this actually this is the first time talking to nathan so thanks a lot for even just coming on because i know i'm kind of a yeah no guy, worries, but, uh... man. yeah thanks for having me it's been it's been good fun <laughs> yeah um uh q3 2018 approximately is the release Finger, um, fingers crossed yep fingers crossed um how's the um uh is, it, so there's there's more than you in Sick Chicken Studios because I, I think I might be. Is there someone else working on? Um, the so game? my um, teammate Andy, like he's he's a programmer. Um, he kind of he helped out absolutely loads in the first couple of years, like setting up some of the systems that we use in the game, um, doing a lot of the coding basically. Um, but he's kind of now he's left me left me to it. So he's helping out here and there. He'll be helping out with bug fixing and um, getting the final release done. But yeah, my coding skills are kind of at the level now where I can handle most of it. So yeah, it's mostly me at the moment but oh i see i see okay um so yeah uh guard duty is the game sick chicken sick chicken studios um yep, or sickchicken.com oh, sickchicken.com yeah we got all our like social links and stuff on that website so you can just go on sickchicken.com and find out about us awesome um yeah yeah uh let's see uh well actually well, well, we have a little bit of time okay well, i don't know maybe maybe um in the time we have to wrap up maybe uh I wanted to ask you a little bit. Okay, so you, you talked a little bit about anime. Uh, you want to talk about? Maybe, okay, well, you, you said Ghost in the Shell is your favorite anime, anime, Cyberpunk. Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, yeah. So what? What? Uh, uh, what? 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 I because I think I've watched almost every Ghost in the Shell from the uh, the first movie, the second movie, Arise was. Uh, shoot, I can't remember the sequence. Uh, Standalone right. Complex, Arise. Yep. Uh, what was your favorite Ghost in the Shell? Um, uh, install it. It's kind of tricky. Um, I like. I really enjoyed Standalone Complex and the SAC second gig as well, um, just because there's a, like there's a lot of it to watch. Um, 
I thought the reboot Arise, I thought that was nice, like because they kind of somewhat rebooted the characters and stuff. The animation style in that is really, really nice. Um, but I don't think you can beat the original film. It's just it's self enclosed. It, it's it's just like a really nice, gritty sort of cyberpunk film. I really like the original, uh, but I like all of it. Um, yeah, that's one of the reasons why I like that series. Is it's none of it that has um, put a sour taste in my mouth. It's all it's all been good stuff. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ghost in the Shell. Um, yeah, it's 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 another big inspiration. As I understand it, it was also a big inspiration for the Matrix. And I've seen some, I've seen some back to back, like like, yeah. like shot for shot comparisons. Have you seen this? Um, I haven't seen the shot for shot comparisons, but it is it's quite apparent that they uh, they were big fans of Ghost in the Shell. Yeah, yeah. And there's like there's shots like I can't think of the specific ones, uh, but yeah, there's like there's like um, there's 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 a shot for shot comparison, and it has like thirty or forty that are like not identical, but they're like. This obviously inspired this. This obviously inspired that. This is. I mean, it's not. It's not obviously. It's a, the story is completely different. It's a different story, but a lot of the yeah, definitely they were huge fans. Oh, there's there was the what is it the the Animatrix right that came out, which is an anime, yeah. uh, an anime little short series of uh, anime set in the world of the Matrix. So obviously they're big fans. Um, and uh, uh, yeah, and I mean yeah, that's that's uh, that's kind of where I got my Silver Spook thing was you know I tried I was trying to be Neo because you know Keanu Reeves right Keanu Reeves he's actually from Hawaii. <laughs> So oh, okay, Keanu Reeves, cool. you, I, I don't know, know if you knew this. Hey. Yeah, Keanu Reeves, he's actually Hawaiian. Like Keanu is a Hawaiian name. Um, I have friends named Keanu. Um, and he's, uh, yeah, so Keanu Reeves, if you're listening uh, from one Hawaiian to another, you got to come down here, okay? We're going to make Neo Feud 2. You're going to be my lead voice actor, possibly my lead uh, star. We're going to get uh, uh, Taika Waititi, who is also a Polynesian, uh, and he's going to be making Akira. So... Uh, we gotta, we gotta do this. It's gonna happen, bro. You gotta come down. <laughs> he, <laughs> he's mean, a nice, he's a nice guy. I reckon if he, if he did hear that, he might even give you an email or something. Like Keanu oh, seems we, like a great guy. Oh, Ke- yeah, 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 yeah. He's a really, he's a, he's a really cool guy. I mean, I, uh, uh, I mean, not, I, I'm, I'm joking about just coming down because you're Hawaiian. I, I, but it is like I actually, yeah, I'm a fan of everything. Johnny Mnemonic, come on, Jim, we're talking about cyberpunk here. This guy has more cyberpunk than almost Ridley Scott, right? You got Johnny Mnemonic, Keanu Reeves, the star of that Matrix. You got. He's coming out with a new show called Replicas, another cyberpunk uh, film. Uh, oh, oh. Yeah, so he's got Keanu Reeves is currently filming, I believe, another cyberpunk movie. So, so he's also it's weird. I don't know why these swines in the cyberpunk. It's just like uh, it's a uh, um, I don't know. It's uh, I mean, you think of Tropical Paradise and all this kind of stuff, but it, it's I don't know. It's just it's just it's just a thing. So, anyways, um, uh, I don't know where I was going with that. I just wanted to name drop Keanu Reeves. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> But yeah, I totally. Uh, I, I, yeah, so Ghost in the Shell is, is great. Um, everybody who hasn't seen Ghost in the Shell, go watch it. Uh, everybody who hasn't seen uh, the Matrix, um, I know some people haven't seen the Matrix, which is weird wow. to me. But yeah, no, I, I just figured everyone had seen the Matrix, at least the first film, anyway. But... No, I've, I've talked to people who haven't, and they're like, "What? What's that?" And I was like, "That's a thi- that's what?" <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh, yeah, check that out. Um, and. Uh, where? Yeah. So anyway, that's really that's 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 you know I'm I'm glad that I finally got to talk some cyberpunk. I've been kind of like jonesing. I've been like the last book of po- couple podcasts, and I mean nothing against you know um, you know uh, alternate history, which is Grunislav's thing, or you know uh, uh, what do you call it? ghost? I don't want I don't know how to say like like superna- supernatural. I guess. Um... Sup- yeah. Supernatural point and click set in New York. I mean, those are also great too. But I've been like, I want to talk about the cyberpunk. Ah, okay. <laughs> They're like, they don't, I don't know what you're talking about. What's the mirror shades? I don't know what that is. What's a mega corporation? I don't know what that is. You know. Uh, so it's really cool. Thanks for talking cyberpunk and entertaining me uh, with that. Yeah, no worries, um, man. <laughs> uh, well, well, if if uh, as I mentioned, what another project, Silver Spook, uh, myself. I'm, I'm now I'm talking about myself in the third person. Yeah, no narcissistic tendencies there. Um, but yeah, Silver Spook Games. Another project is a Deus Ex One like game um, that's currently. In kind of pre-production stages so so uh uh that's uh, uh i guess i'm just announcing that because that's another cyberpunk thing that i'm working on I'm, I'm i'm talking to some of the guys who worked on the nameless mod and some of the original i'm trying to, I'm trying to see if i can coax any of those guys out of the woodwork to come work on this other cool. project we're working on so james dearden if you also get to well he's techno babylon 2's deep in production so i don't want to bug him but um <laughs> i know he applied for a job at cd project red though i know he did say that I think. Oh really? Ah, okay, yeah. yeah. I I, so, I had the pleasure of meeting him um, at Adventure X this year or last oh, year, did? so to speak. Yeah, yeah. I got How's to he see doing? Is he... Yeah, he's good. Yeah, um, I was kind of 
Dave Gilbert was playing guard duty on the demo machine I was running, and then like James was next to me showing me um, his tech demo for Neo, uh, sorry, Techno Babylon 2. Um, so I was kind of like skipping between two quite like prestigious adventure game developers. But um, yeah, he's a really, really nice guy. He's a good chap. Yeah, 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 yeah. He was, he was cool. Yeah, yeah. I had him on. He was the, he was the one that he was the first. Uh, uh, he was the first Wild Jedi uh, guy I got on here. You know, uh, when I when I when I when I started collecting them like Pokemon's, as I keep joking, um, it was Dave, uh, it was, uh, James Dearden, and then uh, Primordia, Mark Yaholam, and then uh, uh, was it was uh, Grandislav, uh, uh, Francisco Gonzalez. But yeah, I, I um, yeah, it's it's really cool to it's really cool that you. Got, I want to get to one of these Adventure X things now. You're making me like really bummed out. I was like, damn, you got <laughs> yeah, David Gerber playing your game, and James Dearden standing around uh, talking to Cyberpunk with you. God damn it, I gotta get up there now. Um, yeah, well, yeah. If you if you can afford the flights at any point, you should try to come out. It is good fun. I'll take Elon Musk's international hyperloop if he gets it built. You know, I think <laughs> he's building one of those space things. I'm gonna, although it might, maybe it's gonna cost twice as much. So, but I'm gonna try to get up to one of these adventure X one day. Silver Spook, go fund me right now. Click on the Silver Spook to Adventure X. Go uh, Kickstart. Uh, uh, I'll, I'll <laughs> just no, just just buy new feud and then that'll help. That'll help out if you want. If you want to support that um, one day. But anyways, um. Yeah, now I'm just going on. I can go on for a long time. I gotta actually wrap it up. So, um, bef- yeah. So one more time, sick, uh, sickchicken.com. Yeah. Sickchicken.com. Yep. Yep. Um, we've got some info about guard duty on there. We got our social links down the bottom. Um, and then we'll be releasing our new press pack, new screenshots, new trailer soon. So look out for that. Yep. Um, this is like yeah, cyberpunk uh, crossed with a uh, medieval uh, discworld like game. Um. Uh, and uh, 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 what else am I going to say? Yeah, so where can we find you if we if you want to get in contact? Um, so I'm pretty active on Twitter. Um, so it's just um, at Sick Chick Studio because I couldn't fit any more text in the name. So Sick Chick Studio. Um, but the like the links on our website as well or facebook.com forward slash Sick Chicken Studios. Um, so I run both those pages. So yeah, contact me on there. Hit me up. <laughs> <laughs> awesome yeah so definitely hit hit him up um and uh yeah if you're releasing indie game yeah yeah i'm silver spook games uh you know silver spook just type in silver spook don't click on all the halloween costume discounts that's not me that doesn't <laughs> it used to come up when you type in silver spook you get sold like uh ghost costumes and uh, uh th- thankfully i've at least somewhat arrived because at least that doesn't show up so yeah silver spook silver spook to games.com uh silver spook uh uh, Twitter, or actually, I couldn't fit my whole name, so it's Silver Spook minus the E. Uh, and um, yeah, uh, if you're an indie developer, you want to, you know, if you're, especially if you're like a cyberpunk kind of one, you hit me up too, and we'll talk about jumping on the podcast. Um, and uh, yeah, um, I'm really horrible at ending this thing, so come up with a really awesome way to end this podcast. <laughs> mm, all right, so the pressure's on. Um... I, I don't know, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you for listening. Thank you. What did Dave Gilbert say? 